Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is the fifth video in our integral series to say thank you for 5,000 subscribers, and I think I've saved a really good one for last. So let's get straight into it. It's the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of sine x over cos cubed x multiplied by e to the power of tan x minus e to the tan x with respect to x. And given that we've got tan x over here as an exponent, uh, it seems like working in terms of tan uh, and sec is a good way to go about solving this integral. So let's convert our sine x and cos x into, the, into those two. And of course, that's going to give us the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of, well, sine x over cos x is tan x. And that leaves us with a 1 over cos squared x, which is conveniently sec squared x. And of course, this is tempting us to make a substitution that we'll talk about in a minute. And yeah, so now that we've written our integral uh, in a different way, we can see we've got a tan x here, a tan x here, a tan x here, and a sec squared x here, and bounds of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it's kind of just asking to make the substitution u equals tan x. And that's because, of course, du will then equal sec squared x dx. So we have our differential part already taken care of. And as um, x approaches negative pi over 2, u will approach negative infinity. And as x approaches pi over 2, u will approach infinity. So we can rewrite our target integral that I'm going to call capital I as the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of u e to the u minus e to the u with respect to u. Now, the next uh, issue that I'm having with this integral, the thing that's kind of putting me off being able to solve it, is the fact that I've got an e to the power of an e to the power of something. That's messy and I don't like it. So let's take this exponent, e to the u, and my thought is try a substitution for it. So try the substitution, let's say v equals e to the u which of course means that dv is going to equal e to the u du, which works quite nicely for us because our current integral is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of u multiplied by e to the u multiplied by e to the negative e to the u. Because of course, when we have um, our powers here being subtracted, really that means we're just multiplying them together like this. And so again, we've really nicely got our e to the u du present making a really easy substitution for dv, and we've got an e to the u here. All that we need to do now is consider our bounds and replace our u. So of course, if v equals e to the u, then u is equal to the natural log of v. And as u approaches infinity, v will also approach infinity. But as u approaches negative infinity, we're, we're plugging in uh, more and more negative numbers uh, into ex an exponent of e, which means we're just going to be dividing 1 by bigger and bigger numbers, because of course uh, e, uh, e to the x never goes below um, the x-axis, it's always a positive function, so it's just going to approach 0. So our new integral then is the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of v multiplied by e to the negative v with respect to v. And this integral is one that's going to take us back to the first ever video that I ever covered on this channel, which was deriving the product form for the gamma function, because there is a relation between this integral and uh, an integral that also relates to the gamma function. And the way that we're going to notice that is by, well, let's consider that gamma of n is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 multiplied by e to the negative t with respect to t. And this e to the negative t term, well, that was present in the integral that we're looking for, but the t to the n minus 1 wasn't. So is there something that we could do, perform, an operation we could perform on this integral that would yield a natural log of t in the integrand somehow? Well, yes, there is. We could differentiate with respect to n. Because in that case, e to the negative t is a constant, and the derivative with respect to n of t to the n minus 1 is equal to the natural log of t times t to the n minus 1. And of course, don't get confused here. We can't use power rule because it's not the base uh, that we're differentiating with respect to. It's the exponent. So given that we know that, we can define gamma prime of n 
as being equal to the derivative with respect to n of the integral. And we can then use differentiation under the integral sign. And of course, we already know what the partial derivative of this term is because we've worked it out. It's going to be uh, the natural log of t times t to the n minus 1 times e to the negative t with respect to t. And this is, of course, very close to what we're looking for, but it's still got this t to the n minus 1 term. So what we're looking to do is set n as something that will eliminate this. And of course, what if we um, evaluate gallon prime of n at n equals 1, then we'll have our power as 1 minus 1, which is 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1 itself, which means gamma prime of 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of t times e to the negative t with respect to t. And uh, that exactly is the integral that we were looking for before. That is i. So all we have to do is work out gamma prime of 1. Now some of you may already have recognized this integral because it's often given as a famous uh, representation of a certain constant, but we're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail today. And it involves a function called the di gamma function. And the di gamma function can be represented in lots of ways, but the way we're going to represent it today is that it's the derivative of the natural log of the gamma function, which means it's equal to gamma prime of n divided by gamma of n. And we can actually find a really nice uh, series form for this using the expression for the gamma function that we derived in the first ever video on my channel. So that tells us that 1 over gamma of n is equal to z e to the z times the Euler-Mascheroni constant times the product from 1 to infinity of 1 plus z over k times e to the negative z over k. And plugging this in to the natural log, multiplying by a negative, and doing a bit of manipulation differentiation, we can get a really nice expression for um, the digamma function. And this expression is that it's equal to negative the Euler-Mascheroni constant plus the sum from k equals 1 to infinity, 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus n, where n is the input to our function. And so that means that the di gamma function evaluated at 1 is equal to the derivative of the gamma function at 1 divided by the gamma function at 1, and it's also equal to negative the Euler-Mascheroni constant plus the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. So clearly, 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 will always be 0, which means that the derivative of the gamma function evaluated at 1 is negative the Euler-Mascheroni constant multiplied by gamma of 1, which is the same as the negative Euler-Mascheroni constant times 0 factorial, which is, of course, 1. So our answer is just negative the Euler-Mascheroni constant. And uh, what the Euler-Mascheroni constant is, is again covered in that video about the gamma function, but for those of you who've forgotten, the Euler-Mascheroni constant is the limiting difference of the harmonic series and the natural log. And it's, it's roughly equal to about 0 0.5 something. So therefore we've shown that i, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of ln v, e to the negative v with respect to v, is just equal to negative this beautiful mathematical constant. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and uh, if you want me to cover the specific derivation of that series representation of the digamma function, let me know because it's a really interesting uh, topic. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks again for 5,000 subscribers. Bye.